<clears throat> so I want to show um, Site Cut, and we're going to be doing a uh, drawing showing how to use the Fly Cut feature, at least as to the best of my knowledge. Um, this component is one we've made. Uh, we made a couple of these, and what they basically have is they have these little grids of holes that are square, and it's, they're 16 by 16, and there are eight of them, so it's just a little over 2,000 little holes. Uh, let's go ahead and do a simulate on this just to see how long it, the software thinks it's going to take. So we click simulate. We're going to get, hit stop because I don't really want to watch it. And we can see that the length of time is going to be 50 minutes and 19 seconds and some change. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, change this to a fly cut uh, part. So the first thing we need to do is we need to ungroup it. So basically you gotta be done with any modifications, any alterations before you do this because once you uh, degroup the part, it basically is a whole bunch of lines. So we're gonna go ahead and degroup de selected. So now this whole thing is just lines. And the reason is apparently Flycut doesn't play well with others. So we're gonna go ahead and here, click uh, scan here and we're going to go lines scan. And uh, this is how it was set up when we clicked it the first time and I haven't had to mess with it. So I'm not 100% sure on what each one of these features do. Uh, the manual does go into some detail, but not much either. So I'll have to play around with these to know a little bit more about them. So let's go ahead and hit okay. And it's gonna, there it has done the command fly cut. And let's see what it's doing. Uh, we can see our direction of travel here and we can see that the line, the machine is running across, around, and then back, and basically it goes back and forth, cutting all of them at the same time, uh, and it's cutting one line per square per movement across, so it will pop across the same hole all four times to finally get a hole all the way through it. Uh, let's go ahead and do a simulate on that and see how long it's going to take and see if we've saved any time. I'll make sure that we have everything selected so and simulate uh, resort yes okay and we're gonna go ahead and hit stop and instead of 55 minutes we're now down to 14 minutes and 32 seconds that's a pretty good improvement um, you know obviously anytime you take more than half the time off that's that's pretty nice uh, so that's one of the aspects that fly cut can be used for um, there are other ones where you can use it on shapes that will align with each other, but primarily it's used for cutting holes in imprecise parts. If you're doing something really precise, you might not want to do this. Uh, another thing that you may have a problem with is that the holes might not pop free. Uh, I would recommend about a 30%, 20 to 30% reduction in your uh, cut speed from what you would normally do. Uh, because when it's doing the fly cutting, it just, it doesn't really have much of a pierce time. So it just, it's blowing the hole through as it's driving over it. This is basically used on really thin materials. On my machine, I don't think I'd do it on uh, more than one millimeter. If you have like a thousand watt, you could probably do it up to maybe like one and a half millimeter. That'd prob probably be about the practical limit. So uh, anyway, we'll move on. see the vast majority are falling clean. Uh, so what we had to do with this is we had to reduce, um, we went from 13 meters a minute to 10 meters a minute um, on our 22 gauge setting and that seemed to fix it. The first one we ran at full 13 and the ones in the center didn't quite pop out so uh, a little playing around with that seems to work but you gotta admit it looks a lot faster than cutting individual squares out.